whenever someone's talking about a problem they have on their own site, it's always the third party apps. We have a third party Java app. I like it when someone, whenever someone's talking about a problem they have on their own site, it's always the third party apps. It's never something they wrote themselves, but we'll give this person the benefit of the doubt. We have a third party Java app that regularly crashes, leaving open transactions in the session. As a result, eventually our connection pool fills up with active, session, active but idle sessions and no one can use the app. What options do we have? We've got three options. The first one is you can do it system wide. And there's actually a parameter called max idle blocker time that you can set at system level. You can't set this at session level because it has to apply to everyone because it's cross sessions. And you can set max idle blocker time to a digit. Now, let's see. It. I've set my max idle blocker time to one. We'll come back to that in a second. Create a table, or select one from Jewel. There we go. There's session number one. It's deleted a row. It's now idle. It's finished. Let's jump over to session two and you can see it's trying to delete from T. Now, here's where I might have to talk at length. <laughs> so I've done alter system set max idle blocker time equals one. Now, what do you think the units are for that? The units are not seconds, they are minutes. Because this is a broad system-wide thing, think about a, a database that has, you know, a couple of thousand sessions running on it. That means we have to be regularly scanning all those sessions any session that might have an active transaction that might be idle, that are idle, that might be blocking something else. So it's quite a uh, aggressive thing to do if you don't know how many sessions could possibly be impacted. So we choose minutes because that is the lowest level of granularity we will allow. If I come back here, you can see it's still going because it's at least a minute before it's going to decide, yep, this person here is causing me problems, I need to blow them away. And in particular, the one minute, my understanding, there we go, look, it took a minute and eight seconds before it finally said, yep, this guy had a lock that is now idle. I'm going to wait for up to a minute or slightly longer before I simply say, look, this guy should have committed or rolled back. Therefore, I'm going to kill his session and I'm going to allow this guy to take over. So if I commit here, if I come back to here, what happened to my session? I got smashed. My session got killed after one minute. Now, I've run this demo a few times um, at various times, and I generally see times of one minute 10, sometimes one minute 30, sometimes even one minute 45. So my guess is every minute we're doing a sweep through all the sessions, and we're only then looking at sessions which might be up to, that might be over a minute waiting for a lock, which means I might be waiting for, say, 45 seconds for a lock when the sweep occurs. Oh, you still should be wait longer. Then I'll come back a minute later and you might be you know, up to a minute 40, et cetera. Seems to be better on Unix than it is on Windows. These are a Windows machine. Maybe the window frequency is a little bit lower. I, I don't know the full internals, but I'm just letting you know that if you set max idle blocker to a minute, which is the lowest you can do at the init order level, then you're typically going to see between one and one minute 30, for example, in terms of waiting for that time. But as you can see, it works. It actually killed off a session that left the lock open, but then became idle. Uh, in the old days of client server, we call this the going to lunch problem. Someone just went out and went to lunch. So that's option one. Option one is you can do it at system level. It's trivial, you just set it. One of the reasons that people I think might not choose this is in something like a connection pool, generally you, you're serving say a web application. That's the most common thing. It's a stateless application. You're serving something like Apex or et cetera. If someone generally sees an hourglass or the you know, little swirly on their web application for more than a few seconds, you know, they, they, they hit refresh. And therefore, they've now got two people because they simply grab the next one in the connection pool and they're trying to wait and they keep hitting refresh. It's very easy for those kind of blocked sessions to very quickly cascade because all you need is a few people hitting, yep, let's go again, let's go again, go again. And suddenly your connection pool has been swamped. Eventually, they'll all clean themselves up because that one person who's idle will be turfed off after a minute. But by that stage, you may have created the same problems anyway. So let's explore what our other options are. The second option is, funnily enough, the exact same facility implemented via Resource Manager. Let's look at that. This has been around, I think, since probably Oracle 11.2, uh, that same concept of killing someone off 
if they are an idle but blocking session. And if you've never seen Resource Manager, there's a very um, lengthy API, very uh, convoluted API because there's so much stuff you can do with it. But in its simplest form, uh, we create a pending error, which is I'm about to do a whole stack of Resource Manager stuff. I want it to either work or not as a single unit. So I'm gonna create a consumer group, which is something that sessions will belong to. I create a plan, which we can bind consumer groups to plans. And we do it here. We say in the plan called stop blockers, for anyone in the consumer group called CG stop blockers, if they are a idle blocker for 10 seconds or more, then we're going to kill them. So in this case, we have, if you're not in the CG stop blockers group, we have this other groups, which is the default. You have to add this to complete the resource manager plan. We validate it and we submit it and it's all done. What this is really doing is setting up a facility where if we attach a user to a certain consumer group, they will now be bound by this facility. And in resource manager, this is units is in seconds, not in minutes. I'll say Scott is allowed to go into this consumer group and Scott will start off in this consumer group whenever they connect. Now let's now turn on this resource manager plan across our database. So we have this plan called stop blockers, which consists of consumer group called CG stop blockers. And if you're in that, then you are allowed to be idle and blocking for up to 10 seconds. So we connect to Scott, create a table of select star from AMP, delete from that. Let's go over to session two. They connect to Scott, they try to do a delete. And hopefully this won't be as long as a minute. And 10. There we go. In this case, it was four seconds. So even though we set it to 10 seconds, one would imagine the sweep is now somewhat more regular and we get, let's just call it close to 10 seconds. So in this case, we got four seconds. He can commit and we come back to here. And the same thing, this person, this person's session has been killed off because they were idle and they were blocking someone. So if you want that more aggressive granularity down to the seconds level, then you can use resource manager to achieve the same thing. Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't explored too heavily how much system overhead that will introduce because one would imagine we did the minutes interval for certain reasons.